Hey guys, Andrew from MobileBurn.com here again, and I'm taking another look at the Lumia 1020 as it relates to some of the previous phones we've seen. Of course, we've got the 920 on the right and the 928. You can see that there are some definite similarities between the 920 and the 928 that we've shown in the past, but the 1020 is kind of trying to bring it to another level. The most obvious being this, this big little circle you see right here. That's what ham, uh, houses the 41 megapixel camera. It's got the Xenon flash here. It's got LED flash as well. Uh, one difference between these is while the 920 and the 928 are capable of wireless charging on their own, with the 1020 they already had to make some compromises to the design in order to have such a large camera center. So in order to get wireless charging you got to get one of these little clip-on accessories. It still supports the Q wireless standard, has a little bit of girth to the device but it's not too bad. It kind of makes it just slightly thicker than the original 920. Uh, once you open it, you'll see on all of them, it's pretty much Windows Phone 8. You know, there's not much to draw the difference between them, between any of the three on the surface, but you will see uh, some things related to the hardware and software mix. This is a AMOLED screen, this is an AMOLED screen, this is a LCD. Uh, we have some, also you'll see that there's some different cameras between them. Uh, on the 928 and the 920, you've got your regular camera. On the 1020, you have three different cameras. You have the Pro Cam, which is pretty much going to be where you really dive deep into all the settings, where you really personalize it. We've got a, another video I'm going to overlay here now, and uh, so we're going to take a quick look at that. UI here, very intuitive. And I've actually set this up. There's some uh, advanced settings in here. You can see this is the rule of thirds with the grids in here. Okay. So, and under settings, you can see rule of thirds, golden ratio, crosshair square. So these are all just photography concepts or framing exactly, your photo. Exactly, okay. exactly. And so rule of thirds basically, and I'm not the photography expert here, but basically you, what you want to do is center your subject within those thirds. Um, the advanced controls, so basically you have flash setting, white balance, autofocus, ISO, um, shutter time, and exposure value. So individually you can adjust these, and probably the easiest thing to see is when you change exposure value, you can overexpose or underexpose a picture based on the lighting. A really good example, we have a demo set up, is when you have someone standing in front of a, a, a white... Uh, uh, oh, a a <laughs> standing in front of like the window out there, what you'd want to do is kind of move the exposure value up so you're getting a clear picture of that, of that person. So you can also do all the adjustments at once. Okay. So you can go in here and start messing around. And the great thing is, is it gives you immediate feedback what the image is going to look like based on your settings. If you get to a situation where you're like, I'm not sure what to do, you just slide that back and it automatically goes wow, back okay. to your default settings. Um, so for focus, basically what you want to do is you can pick your focus points. So we're focusing there, we can focus up there, and capture. Now the image that you're capturing right now, since this is 16 by 9 aspect ratio, is a 34 megapixel image. To access that immediately, we go up here to the review icon, and this is the image that we just took. You can just do a quick double tap zoom in, or you can hit the reframe icon here, and go in now, and zoom in to some details. Not that that's an interesting detail, but there's some details yeah. right there. You can save that, and now immediately share that, and this becomes your five megapixel high resolution image. Okay. And you can continue to zoom and reframe without ever changing your original capture, your 34 megapixel. So that is always available to you to continue to zoom and reframe so, and that's really reinventing the zoom on this device one other really cool feature and if we can kind of, kind of come around, around this way what we'll do is we'll do a pre-capture zoom so just slide my finger up here and I'm zooming in and I'm not losing any resolution on this zoom right now 
So I'm going to focus in right here. You can kind of see where we're at. Let's take that picture here. Now we're going to come back to that. I'm going to go into reframe. You can see that that was actually in the picture. We can come over here and zoom in on that. And now we would save that and actually save that, uh, share that image there. So even with a pre-capture zoom, you're not losing anything that the actual sensor seeing. Okay. It's just capturing what you zoomed in on without any loss of resolution. Um, even after uh, first time use. So you can take get the best, best picture. You can create an action shot, which is really cool. This is called motion focus, so you can emphasize the motion and kind of blur out the background. Okay. You can see some some of their eyes are open or closed. You can uh, change faces, and then you can remove objects. This is the the photo bomber kind of okay. uh, thing. So now that we're ready to uh, take that image, here we'll uh, here's some action. Movement here. So we'll go in here to the review icon. And best shot, they'll probably all be good here. So probably the action shot. We'll see how this actually comes out. There wasn't a whole lot of action going on. You can see it picked up. Oh, where that woman yeah, was walking yeah, yeah. by, okay. And she is walking. Um, This is probably the best. Uh, so you can see now, we've got everything kind of, she's in focus and everything else is kind of blurred. Okay. So you can actually save that now and share that as a five megapixel image.